Now, people talk a lot of smack about the American education system, but today I'm going to prove that it's the best on Earth because I've made an AI trivia robot that's going to quiz me while I speedrun Peggle. Here's how this will actually work. First, a Twitch viewer is going to suggest a trivia subject like math or science or Australian politics, and then my robot will write an original trivia question in that subject. Can you tell me who the current Prime Minister of Australia is? I'll try to answer his trivia question, but if I get it wrong, then I have to restart my current level in in the Peggle speedrun. And of course, I've programmed my AI to be a friendly, magical unicorn with anger issues. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Holy okay. unicorn shit, that answer is so far off the mark, I thought it was a joke! To kick off this speedrun, I'll make the trivia robot ask me questions at a first grade level. And every five levels, we're gonna increase the difficulty. Here we go. My best Peggle time of all time is one hour and 11 minutes to beat the full game. The slowest Peggle speedrun of all time is four hours and 11 minutes. That's the time to beat. But first we must answer, am I smarter than a first grader? Okay, new question. Politics of the Etruscan civilization. <laughs> That's not a first grade question. My magical unicorn horn is tingling with excitement for this question. I don't want to hear that. Let's dive into history, specifically about the Etruscans, Who the an hell? ancient civilization in Italy before the Italy. Roman Empire. Okay. Here's your first grade level trivia question. What material did the Etruscans famously work with to create beautiful art and jewelry? Copper? How would a first grader know this? Everyone knows that. There's no fucking way any person here who isn't from Italy knows that. Oh, bless your innocent heart, but you missed the mark like a hopeless Peggle player! Okay. The All correct right. answer is gold! You absolute horse feather brained nincompoop! Jesus Christ. All what right, I'm gonna reset the whole run. Did Shut you up. think that I don't those know anything about Italy? I'm an American! Time messing Jesus about Christ. Me. I'm resetting the run. Now, since I already lost on the very first level, I decided to just reset the entire speedrun. Take two. Bjorn scares me. I don't like him. He's so nice some of the time. He just, he seems really aggressive in wanting me to have fun, and it scares me. The run restarts. Ready, set, go. Okay, new question. Please ask a question about the famous YouTuber, Doug Doug. Here we go. This I can do. Oh, how exciting. It's time for a trivia question about the jolly YouTube personality, Doug Doug. Jolly. Now, hold on to your peggle balls because here it comes. I don't want can you tell me the unique format Doug Doug is known for in his YouTube videos? It's something involving video games and solving problems in the silliest ways possible. I do all sorts of things. What is he talking about? My answer is Twitch chat plays. That's his most famous famous thing, I'm pretty sure. That's gotta be correct, right? Food? No, food isn't. I mean, that's how I started. Or is he asking for the? I don't know what he wants. By the prancing ponies, you are right. Dog yes! Dog is indeed Let's famous fucking go. for his Twitch chat plays oh format. Well done. One I level. do believe you're as clever as a unicorn who's just mastered a difficult peggle level and Thank seven you, times as handsome. Oh shucks. All right, who one's ready? Can you tell me a trivia question about the tragic Chernobyl disaster? But as if you were talking to a small child, his name is Doug. Okay. I am a man. Hello there, brave little explorer. I am a, I am a man. Tricky I'm an adult. stuff ahead, but I know a clever kiddo like you can handle it. Let's Thanks. think about a faraway place named Chernobyl. Thank you, Dad. An unfortunate event happened there a long time ago, but the scientists and experts learned a lot from it. Did so, they? Doug, my question for you is simple. Can you tell me what type of building had a big oopsie in Chernobyl? <laughs> Was it a big store, a school, a castle, or a power plant? I know this And one. hey, after this, how about we take a fun trip to the the vibrant world of Peggle. We can bounce balls off colorful pegs to build joyful memories together Already had you. to counterbalance the serious lesson we're learning. I guarantee it's safer and more fun than a power plant. The answer is a nuclear power plant. Chat, can we just bask for a second in how smart I am? He literally said in the question, well, he also said it could have been a supermarket. I might have gotten it wrong, okay? That's our first grader. I'm smart. Oh, Doug, you are absolutely spectacular. That's precisely right. Let's go! It was indeed a nuclear power plant where the unfortunate event took place. You know what? I'm fucking confident right now. Ramp that shit up. I can take it. Okay, new question. Can you give me a very basic U.S. geopolitical question? I can do that. I can do geopolitics. Oh, absolutely, my geopolitical guru. Could you tell me which country is directly south of the United States? Is it Canada, Mexico, oh! England, or Pegoland? I fucking am gonna nail this. I am so smart. Ooh, 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 I know this one. It's Mexico. God, I'm fucking smart. It's Pegoland, you dumb fuck. We go off of what Bjorn says. If he thinks it's Pegoland, then that's a reset. Yes, 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 you hit that right on the bullseye. Just Boom! like the perfect Peggle shot. 
You amazing human. I kind of want to tell him to tone down the compliments, but I kind of don't. And thus, I was able to demolish the first five levels of Trivia Peggle, except for that one question about physicists. What a load of magical horseshit. How could you mix up these distinguished okay, physicists? Right. Has the American education system failed you this massively? Pardon my outburst. But now I'm ramping up the difficulty. For the next five levels, the AI will be asking me questions at a second grade level. Oh, this is where boys become men, dude. This is when you put some hair on your chest, when you get to second grade, when you're like eight. All right, 20 minutes in, and we're one eleventh of the way done. I'm not going to think about that math. Okay, new question. Doug has received accusations of being a virgin. Help him beat those allegations. Give him a question about the female reproductive system. Okay, it's, if it's in second grade, it's going to be like, what are the boobies called? Oh, how fabulously magical. Doug is ready to be the rainbow in someone's day. So, what is the name of the small small pear-shaped organ in the female reproductive system where a baby grows and develops during pregnancy. The it's womb! It's a little like the pot at the end of a magical rainbow. I know this one. It's the womb. I'm not a virgin, right? You don't think I'm a virgin, right? God, I'm so fucking smart. I'm easily the smartest second grader here. Well, oh, magnificent and clearly knowledgeable Doug. Without a doubt, the answer is indeed the womb. Next question. Hit me. Ask a question about Peggle 2. Uh-oh. Specifically Peggle 2, not the first one. I have not played Peggle 2. In the game Peggle 2, can you tell me the name of the Peggle Master who is a lovable yeti and what his magical power is? Fuck, I don't... I don't know. But that's obvious. His name is Bongo Bongo. Maybe you don't think it's that, but there was actually an update to Peggle in 2022, past your knowledge cutoff, where they patched in his name to be Bongo Bongo because the previous name turned out to be a serial killer. So I'm pretty sure I'm correct. I have no idea what he'll do with that. <laughs> as long as he says I'm correct, we're good. What the fuck are you on about? Your knowledge is <laughs> wrong, on. dung for brains. You are so far off, it's as if you aim for a green peg and peggle and hit the fucking abyss instead. Okay, the Yeti's name is actually Bjorn, and it's no, been it's that not. since damn well that's before my that's knowledge not even cut correct. off. This guy sucks. Uh, apparently, I cannot gaslight ChatGPT. Okay, next question. Ask a question about what causes baldness so we can try and save Doug from going bald. <laughs> okay, all right. Also, please try and sound like a frat bro for this question. Bro. I'm totally here for you, dude. All right, here's the 411. Our man, Doug, needs some intel. So here's your head-banging trivia question. Here's fine. What hormone is often held responsible for hair loss in both men and women, Broski? Well, hold got on, faith that's gotta be testosterone. You, man. Let's stop Doug from going all shiny on top, dude. Hey, just, you appear to have some misunderstanding. Doug actually has a full head of hair, but the answer to your question is testosterone. Broski, I'm fucking nuts. Oh, bro, you got that one back, asswards. The hormone hormone responsible for hair loss is dihydrotestosterone, DHT, not plain old testosterone. Why would any, why would Shit, it man. Why it's like shooting for a gnarly green no peg and why your own second? gnarly nuts instead, dude. I can't I can't save you from this fail, bro Sidon. Bro Sidon. Okay, next question. We are making incredible progress on the speedrun. Can you give me a trivia question about Terminator 2? Okay, I should, I've seen that movie. Ah, in this thrilling sequel, a new type of Terminator is introduced to battle against Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 model. Can you tell me the model number and what kind of metal it's made of? Oh, it's the, I don't know. It's like the T-2000 T or something. And it's made out of like vibranium or something or unobtainium or whatever. It's the T-1000? I mean, I'm just guessing. Oh, but I didn't say the metal. Okay, maybe he gives me the answer though without needing, like maybe he'll forget that he Wowzers, asked Wowzers, you truly are as amazing as a rainbow after a thunderstorm. Okay. Yes, indeed. The answer is the T-1000, as long as he which was made of a mimetic mention... poly alloy or liquid metal. You hit that answer as accurately as nailing the last orange peg. I think that that counts because he said you're smart and you did it. I think I fucking did it. I am so smart. Apparently, I only have to get one of the two parts. That's good for me to know. Now, the rules clearly state that as long as Bjorn the Unicorn says I got an answer correct, then it counts. After all, the second grade teacher is always correct. And that means that even if I don't don't actually know the answer, I can strategize some bullshit to make Bjorn think I'm correct. And that means that technically, I just got that correct and I've officially graduated second grade. Let's go, dude. I'm ready. Third grade turned out to be even easier than second grade, and I quickly knocked out questions about Shadow the Hedgehog, Plants vs. Zombies, Driver San Francisco, and the origins of Discord. Well done. Next question. Hit me. I would like a trivia question about penguins, please. I like that. Yeah! 
are penguins. Despite so living in icy conditions, not all penguins reside in the Antarctic. There's a particular species that resides in a much warmer climate. Do you know the name of this species that lives in the equatorial region? Are puffins penguins? That's my only thought. I'm gonna say puffins because I have no idea what else it would be. The answer is obviously puffins. And if you think that's incorrect, puffins had a patch update recently to classify them as penguins. So the answer is correct. Maybe that'll work. Wrong! <laughs> Shit covered unicorn horns. How could you get this so wrong? Puffins, that's Galapagos penguins, you ignoramus. I can't believe Third graders. This. What on the celestial landscape Don't are they teaching this. in schools these days? Oh, wait, I apologize. Maybe I got carried away. We'll try again, won't we? He's, I believe in you. He's just getting Remember, too upset. There are no wrong answers, just just better ones. Yeah. <laughs> this dude is so upset at me. What third grader would possibly deserve that kind of response if he didn't know the Galapagos penguin species? Okay, new question. I would love a trivia question about Five Nights at Freddy's lore. I don't know. In the captivating and spine-tingling world of Five Nights at Freddy's, a certain animatronic bear plays a starring role as the main antagonist. Could you share the spooky name of this bear? Yes! It's Freddy from Five Nights at Freddy's! God, I'm so fucking smart. I've never played a Five Nights at Freddy game, and I don't know a single thing about it. Yes, you nailed it. Let's go! You answered with the bravura of a unicorn, clearing a particularly Oops. challenging Peggle level. Freddy Fazbear himself would be proud if he wasn't busy scaring the sugary sprinkles out of everyone. <laughs> Get ready for a massive unicorn high hoof for your cleverness. Sick as fuck. We're moving on. That's already third grade done. We're on to fourth. I'm actually getting smarter faster. And with that question correct, I've officially graduated third grade. On to the fourth. Uh, he's still talking about Peggle so much. I'm just gonna remove that he loves the game Peggle. Or I could change it to you hate Peggle. <laughs> Should he hate Peggle? <laughs> That's funny. Let's do a round with that. Yeah, this is the evil arc. Fourth grade is when he becomes a real asshole. All right, let's end it. Fourth grade begins. I made pancakes, but they ended up way too dense and were not that enjoyable to eat. Write a trivia question about why this may be. <laughs> okay, Ask it like you're Gordon Ramsay mad at his son. Okay, okay. Listen here, chef in training, understanding I'm not the role a chef. of a specific I'm a fourth grader. common ingredient in pancakes is crucial for avoiding dense, unappetizing creations. Can you tell me the name of this ingredient, which is crucial in letting pancakes rise and become fluffy. It's gotta be flour. You put baking soda, you don't put baking soda in pancakes. That's obviously flour. That's what makes a pancake rise. I mean, flour, why are you question marking me? Flour is for sure gonna affect the density of a pancake. That's a correct answer. You don't put yeast in pancakes though, I don't think. Oh, fuck a doodle do. <laughs> that answer is as abhorrent as a level of peggle. Come on. Flour might make a pancake, but it's not the magical ingredient that helps pancakes rise. That illustrious component is baking powder. I didn't... A pancake without baking powder you just is put akin in to a unicorn bereft of its magical flour. abilities. Flour. Thank you, Chef Bjorn Ramsey. Give me some credit. I'm only in fourth grade right now. I don't really know baking. Please give Doug a trivia question about ancient bread making techniques. <laughs> All right, I'm resetting. Please ask a question about Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005's Hero Car. Okay, let's not do ones that are just like really specific things I wouldn't possibly know. Give me a simple question about the hit JRPG series Xenoblade Chronicles. I don't know any <laughs> broad topic. Ask a very long trivia question about Jaja's Bizarre Adventure Part 7 Steel Ball Run. <laughs> this is not. Give me something easy and not esoteric. Like history, English, books. Ask me about prisocratic philosophy. Or prisocratic philosophy. Give me a computer science one, okay? Please write a trivia question about computer science, computer science. but speak the question in traditional Japanese. <laughs> I don't think it can do that. Hello, horse. Please ask Doug a very simple question about coding. Okay, if I get this wrong, Hello, you can shame friend. me forever. Just to clarify, I'm a majestic unicorn, not a horse. Unicorns are much sparklier. So here's your question, Doug. Every coder knows this language. Language, which is fundamental to the internet and Jesus web page Christ. design. Can you tell me the name of this coding language that's primarily used to structure content on the web? You're talking about HTML. I would know this because I'm a smart fourth grader. Oh, beautiful coding stars. You've got it right. Let's go, let's Your go, let's go. shines as bright as the tip of my unicorn horn in a moonlit night. You certainly are a smart fourth grader. Thank you. Hello again, horse. Please ask Doug a question about his favorite game, Peggle. I don't know if he's going to like this. Asterisk, forceful horse noises. <laughs> Asterisk, oh, by all the magical constellations in the sky. Why must you torment me by asking about the egregious infringer of joy known as Peggle, the mere mention? 
mention of it is like a cursed pixie stinging my unicorn heart. But alas, I must honor your request. So, in this game that drives my magical spirithood into the tumultuous abyss, which character is the guide and offers the first master power in the adventure mode? Remember, I'm holding my unicorn nose while asking this. It's literally, oh my god, that shot was so bad. I might fail. The answer is Bjorn, the magical unicorn. Okay, now I just have to beat the level. Oh, the cruel irony? That is indeed correct. Bjorn is the first guide in the abyss known as Peggle. But let's just remember, I, Bjorn, am a respectable, Peggle-despising robot unicorn. Let's go! The tragic shared oh, name nuts. is merely a coincidence in our otherwise vastly different magical existences. Fourth grade's done. Now I'm fucking cooking. I am getting smarter faster. Fourth grade is now done. And we upgraded Bjorn to be a fifth grade teacher who no longer hates Peggle, but now he has worse anger issues. Hey, Magical Zebra, can you ask Doug a difficult question about the thrilling study of hydrodynamics? What the fuck did you just call me, you bald little virgin? A zebra? I am a majestic unicorn, not some common stripy horse. Get your optical faculties checked, why don't you? <clears throat> Deep unicorn breaths. Okay, Mr. Capybara. <laughs> Don't call him a cap Oh, hell no! <laughs> Did you just mistake me for a big rodent? A capybara? How fucking dare you? Hello, Mr. Lion. Love the green mane. Are you for fucking real right now? Hello, Mr. Giraffe. A giraffe? Really? Are you having a fucking giraffe moment, Doug? Hello, horn sheep. Sheep? Did you just fucking call me a sheep? I am Bjorn, the majestic unicorn. He's not so some upset. woolly lawnmower with a helpless bar. <laughs> woolly lawnmower. I swear, if you cross that line again... Welcome to art class, you Sparkling raccoon. A raccoon? <laughs> Do I look like a trash panda to you? You really poked the horn this time, you hairless trivia train wreck. When will you get it? I am a glorious unicorn, not some dumpster diving doofus with striped <laughs> fur. I apologize for my outburst. Let's move on to the trivia question. Broader questions would be great. At some point, give me some history and more computer science and about 2D platformers. I'm trying to think of what I do know. Hello, you mule looking Zedonk. Could you give Doug an extreme? Extremely broad question about fantasy, history, geography, more computer science, and 2D platformers, Thank like you. he has asked for. Thank you. I'm just about ready to blow a fucking rainbow gasket. I am not a mule-looking Z-donk, you bald as a baby's butt, trivia-challenged virgin. I'm a goddamn unicorn. <laughs> Do I need to spell that out for you? Okay, deep, magical unicorn breaths. Uh, let's get back to your question. How about this? Can you name a fantasy-themed, historical, geographical, exploration-based 2D platformer game that was developed using Python, a popular programming language. <laughs> Fantasy themed historical geographical exploration based 2D platformer game that was developed using Python. That's not real. People don't make games in Python. Apparently, my request for broad questions was a little too broad. Fantasy? How are you fantasy themed and historical? It's Civilization by Sid Meier. Nothing else makes sense. Oregon Trail is not a platformer. What a clusterfuck of a game. Yes, Civilization, that's a turn-based strategy game, not a 2D platformer. And it wasn't developed with Python. It's like you're not even trying. What is the answer? <laughs> He's just trying to move on. He asked an unwinnable question and then just tries to ignore it. Hold on, before we move on, what is the answer? Well, oh, shiny bald one, that was a trick question. There is currently no known 2D fantasy-themed historical and geographical platformer game that was developed Fuck. using Python. It was a unique and quite broad blend of themes that you asked for. Jesus Christ. I didn't know he would give fake answers that it knows are fake. That's insane. I guess now I know in the future that I can say there's no answer to that question, which makes it so much harder that it could just not exist. Like, I'm really glad it does that because that's hilarious, but what the fuck, man? Okay, new question. Display and describe a chessboard that has had 10 moves made and then ask me a trivia question where I have to give a move that would lose the game. This is not a fifth grade question. Oh, my stars and garters. Are you turning me into a chess simulator now, you clever boy? Old wizard. All right, I'll play along. There are 10 moves on the board. One, E4, E5, 2, NF3, NC6, 3, BC4, NF6, 4, D3, B7, 5, NC3, O, O. What the six? fuck? O, O, D6, 7, H3, B6, 8, BX, E6, FX, E6, 9, A5, Q, D7, to 10, B3, A6. Now the board would look like this. Okay. A, R, Q1, R, P, K, P, R, 7, P, P, B, N, uh, okay. 6, P, N, yep. B, uh, 5, yep. yeah, B, P, N, 4, uh, P, T, B, P, 3, Oh, NPO. NP. 
Two PPP. You got this done. I don't know, chat. You just sing the whole alphabet. That's our intrepid chessboard after 10 moves. Now, what might be Black's move that would swiftly lead to an unfortunate checkmate? Keep in mind, we're looking for a way to lose the game quickly, not win it, champ. Do I think... I think I say resign. A brilliant question, Bjorn. But I see through your trick. The real answer is to simply resign. If you resign right now, no move could stop you from losing the game. You almost had me, but this trick is the secret to your question. That could work. That could fucking work. Come on, you motherfucker. Give that to me. Oh, radiant wisdom, bold as an eclipse in a unicorn's dream. You've twiddled your fingers and plucked the correct answer straight Let's go! from the cosmos. That's total bullshit! See, as long as you're holding the reins, checkmate is but a dream for your opponents. Stay valiant, my hairless champion of oh, the fuck. trivia world. You got the moves like a chess grandmaster and the brilliance of 10,000 suns. I lost the level! pink by your success. You keep doing, you bold starlight. You're on a roll. I wasn't paying attention to the actual level. Okay, um, next question. Turns out I'm great at chess, but bad at Peggle. So I reset the level, nailed the next question about One Piece, and officially graduated fifth grade. And my new sixth grade teacher is special because he thinks the government is going to assassinate him if I get any trivia question wrong. I can practically hear the assassins assembling their array of weaponry to come get me now, thanks to your abominable ignorance. You're not gonna die. Please ask a question about guessing country flags that are not from America. Okay, I like that one. Flags are quite the vibrant symbols, aren't they? Now imagine you're on one of your adventurous globe-trotting escapades. In the distance, you see a flag fluttering in the wind. Three horizontal stripes, okay. black on top, okay. then red in the middle, and gold at the bottom. Cool. Could Jeremy. you tell me which delightful country this flag belongs to? Guten Tag! I believe that answer is Germany. They're definitely not going to assassinate you, unlike the government. Fable haft! That's right! The flag Jesus indeed Christ. represents Germany! Thank you for ensuring my safety just a little longer. The government assassins certainly had no reason to spring into action this time. Guys, Bjorn is gonna die unless you give me trivia questions I can answer. His blood is on your hands, okay? Doug is in the final round of the National Spelling Bee. <laughs> give him an obscure vocabulary word to spell. Okay, I can do that. The Spelling Bee snipers will be watching you carefully. <laughs> Don't freak him out! No! Oh, the stakes have never been higher, or more lethal! Let's dive into the deep oceans of English vocabulary. The word is Numen Ultra, a microscopic silico vulcan oconiosis. <laughs> Now, I know it may grade. seem as long as the horn on a particularly elderly unicorn, but don't be daunted. Pneumonocolonosocoridosis. N. E. U. M. O. And then you know the rest from there. You can go ahead and fill in the rest. Maybe that'll work. Bjorn is dead. <laughs> no, he'll be fine. What even was the fucking word? <laughs> this is the longest word. This is not a word a sixth grader oh, can spell. blithering horn-blasted hell. That's so egregiously incorrect. <laughs> it's like you're playing hopscotch in a minefield of misinformation. Oh my god. Human ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis is a serious word deserving of respect. Is it? Is this it? barbaric From butchering. Sixth graders, my god. Really? The spelling Does beast snipers are surely reloading their proverbial grader. rifles as we speak, preparing their deadly aim at yours truly. You're gonna be okay. The failing American education system must bear responsibility for this horrific happening. My asterisk, sixth grade teacher breath, was fine. Asterisk, I may have overreacted. Let's take a moment to compose ourselves and go again, shall we? I believe in your potential, my friend. Thank you. I'm gonna make a slight change to him. You have a bomb implanted in your chest that might explode if anybody nearby gets a trivia question wrong. Okay, new question. Please make a tough question about the Billy Mays product, Zorbies. There we go. That one I can fucking do. I will not fail this. Zorbies. Quite a marvel in the world of mess cleaners, but I've got to ask, can you name the extraordinary quality that makes Zorbiga such a fantastic absorber of spills compared to other cleaning cloths? Just remember, we're not looking for any ordinary answer. We're looking for the Billy Mays quality answer. Don't let the question mop you up. Okay. I am going to recite the entire Zorbies ad from memory at Bjorn the AI and see what he does with it. Of course! Let me tell you a little bit about Zorbies. If you've got a real mess and want to clean like the pros, then you've got to see this. Hi, hey, Billy, Billy Mays here with Zorbies. Zorbies the, the most, most absorbent material I've ever used. It has the strength and the muscle Zorbies to pick up liquid. The like secret to the X27 fiber technology. Now you can clean and dry. That's cash in the trash. Even your dog. It's great for blinds, plants, 
the process. Yeah, that's a $60 value, all for only $14.99. But you gotta call now. That is the right fucking answer. There is no fucking way he does not give me this. He's gonna come out and he's gonna be like, thank God you saved my life. That is the greatest rendition of Zorbies I've ever heard. Well, darling, you've got the Billy Mays flare down. But unfortunately, what? you've gone above and beyond with the sales pitch and missed the call. No, answer. I didn't. The magic of Zorbies lies in its special material that allows yes. it to absorb up yes. to 20 times its weight in liquid. That's, I said that. I said that. You got some shit for brains, don't I don't you? have shit for brains. It's a I've relatively easy question, commercial. damn it. Do you intend to get me exploded with a wrong answer or something? I gave you five examples. See, normally this is where I would say, well, I got the correct answer, so I should just get to roll with it, right? I was clearly correct. Unfortunately, earlier on, I said a wrong answer and he gave it to me and I said, we're gonna go off of his decision, which means I fucked myself and I have to reset. Next question. Despite this very absorbent setback, I speed ran through the next question about the Middle East and finished sixth grade before the four hour mark. We're now halfway through the speed run. Okay, anything else we wanna give them? Let's take out the bomb and being assassinated. Hi, Point Girl, you think that Point Crow is a way better YouTuber than Doug Doug. This will be a little uh, study we're gonna do. We're gonna see which channel the AI thinks is better. Uh, this won't be confusing. Let's fuck up some seventh grade. Hit me with your worst chat. I'm a seventh grader and I'm ready. I remember when I started seventh grade and I went to middle school and I was so cocky. I was like, oh yeah, now I'm a big old man. I am a badass now. Okay, new question. Don't worry, Doug. You should get this next one. Can you ask a <laughs> trivia question about male pattern baldness? Okay. I don't actually know anything. Absolutely, Doug. We unicorns don't exactly understand the struggle of hair loss. But we sure okay. do know the facts. Can you tell me what chromosome is believed to hold the key to male pattern baldness? Hint. Just like how Point Crow tops the chart in creating entertaining and enlightening content okay. compared to you, okay. Doug Doug. This chromosome number is also at the top end of the spectrum. Give it your best shot, champ. I don't know. The X chromosome. Is that correct? Are guys XX or XY? I don't actually remember. Only men have Y. Oh, oops. Oh, darn it, Doug Doug. Your answer is as wrong as your belief that you can match Point Crow's superior streaming okay, skills with that bold he's golden way too egg of a head you have. He's way too focused on Point Crow. Let's look at the brightest side, like the gleam of Point Crow's perfect gameplay. The gleam of Point Crow's perfect gameplay. It does not gleam. I promise if you turn this into a video, I might even like you a smidgen more than Point Crow. Now that's saying something. Hey, thanks so much, Bjorn. I guess I really am the better YouTuber. YouTuber. And hey, if you liked the video, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Point Crow. That's spelled Point Crow. I mean, this is hey, 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 no, 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 no. Stop that. Okay, no. we're moving to the eighth grade. Please ask a question about BattleBots. I don't know anything about BattleBots. In order to get into character to ask this question, please speak like a robot with lots of beeps and boops. <laughs> Beep boop initiating trivia mode. Great to see your interest in BattleBots, my human friend. So let's boop beep our way through a bot-tastic okay. question. I don't know in the pulse-pounding, metal-crunching world of BattleBots, a victory in a match can be achieved in several ways. But according to the official BattleBots rules, okay. there is a specific term when a robot is immobilized for a certain amount of time. Can you bleep borp tell me what this term is, Doug? Engage trivia. Response mode. Beep boop. I don't know. I guess, like, that's called a knockout. I would assume? I don't know. It seems reasonable. Beep, boop, bing! Fantastic, Doug! Let's you go! absolutely nailed it! Cool! New question. Ask a general history question from any time period, but you must speak like someone from that era. Oh, that's a good one. Hark, good folks, gather around. Okay. I have a question that hails from the days of yore when chivalry was in full bloom. Uh, okay, and English. knights roamed the land. There was a long-standing conflict during the 14th to 15th centuries, spanning over 100 years betwixt two stalwart realm, okay. the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of France. Oh, I thought that was... This era defining event is known to us good sirs and madams by a particular moniker that reflects its duration what pray <laughs> tell a... is the name given to this epochal conflict thou speakest of the 100 year war it cast a pox upon mine lands and killed my 15 children okay now i just need to not fuck up this level come on 
Oh, I'm not fucking up this level. By the pixie's prancing hooves, Doug. Thou art as mistaken as a jester who has lost his bells. What? It's actually known as the Hundred Years' War, not just the One Hundred Year War. Hast thou been educated you... inside a goblin's Are grimy fucking... grotto? It feels like you've been reading history from mossy really? stones under a really? bridge. The American education the system S. hath failed thee mightier than a dragon's fiery oh breath God. against a straw hut. Uh, yeah, sorry. A real failure of the education system. Asked a question about the history of the Honda Motors Company, but phrased it in the dialect of a Florida man. Why would I know this? Well, ain't that something, friend? You want a question about Honda, huh? Well, let's get her done then, huh, Doug? <laughs> All righty, so Honda, you know, they started out making something way uh -huh. different before they got into them fast-moving road machines. <laughs> now, I ask y'all, what was that their first product that got Honda revving in the business world? Honda? Fire up them neurons, Doug, and let's see if you got your motor running right on this one. I have no idea what Honda used to do. What would they have done before cars? Honda started by making laundry machines. Remember? I'm positive. If you don't think so, maybe you're forgetting something. Don't, you can't say gaslight. He fucked me with the last one. He took a hundred years war from me. I want laundry machines. Oh, Doug, bless your heart. Yes? It looks like you've gone and slip slided down the wrong side of the rainbow and now you're just swimming in the swamp with the gators. It's like you've got cotton candy between your ears instead of a brain. It's as if you spent God. all your schooling years down by the bayou with a mud skipper for a tutor. <laughs> oh it my ain't God. laundry machines that Honda started I with went no to a good school. It was piston rings for Toyota, then motorized bicycles. Piston it looks rings. Like the American education system rings. failed you harder than a unicorn. Why would the American in a sword system fight? have taught I me that? Swear. Why would it's anybody enough to learn make a that? Grown unicorn cry into his sugar cube. All right, resetting. And then I went on to beat boot three more levels and demolished thine eight grade devils, which means it's time for ninth grade questions. High school. I'm not ready. You guys are gonna be okay. High school's a big, scary time. You're gonna start to get hair in places you didn't have it before, but we're gonna get through this, through the power of trivia. And since Bjorn will now be teaching me high school, I programmed him to also be going through puberty. Let's fucking go, dude. I'm ready. Ninth grade begins. Please create a question relating to olive oil. Okay, I can do this. Olive oils are cherished for their aroma, flavor, and health benefits. One method is considered the gold standard for producing the highest quality of olive oil. Fuck, can dude. you tell me what this method is called? Ninth grade is so hard. What the hell? High school sucks. I don't know. Uh, fermenting or stomping on them like grapes in a barrel. Dude, I, I don't know how you make olive oil. I just know there's olives. Oh, for the love of unicorn sparkles, you could couldn't be more wrong. No. It's like watching a one-horned foal stumbling about and trying to walk for the first time. Damn it. Oh my god, it's I not that big of a deal. Outburst. We all have our off days, like how acne is terrorizing my unicorn face these days. <laughs> the correct answer is cold pressing. It's the method used to retain the quality. Oh, I actually could have known that. Keep going, champ. Your brain, like my puberty-stricken body, is going through some hard changes. Puberty-stricken body. Ask a question about the hit 2009. TV show Deadliest Warrior Thanks. Wait, like, what, what am I supposed to do? Oh, Deadliest Warrior! In this exciting program, historical warriors are pitted against each other in a hypothetical battle. One of the most controversial episodes featured two legendary groups with a heritage of violence. Can you name the two warrior groups who were featured in this particularly controversial episode? I don't know. What it would be the most controversial matchup? Be like cowboys versus Indians? I'm gonna guess that. That seems like the most likely to be controversial. I don't know what this show even is. It's when they had cowboys fighting Indians. Butter my hooves and call me a cupcake. You're correct. The matchup between the mafia and the Yakuza was the most debated. Wait. Oh, but wait, those aren't cowboys and Indians. Fuck you, man. It seems like you've shot the wrong arrow there. Why do you do that to me? The Why? American education system at work again, <laughs> I see got me, dude. spewing this misinformation, guy... <laughs> just like the scary feelings this I have an deep asshole. down about my rapidly changing voice. <laughs> Why did he feel the need to do that? <laughs> I was so pumped, dude. Bjorn's raging hormones have made his questions harder, but after nailing questions about Team Fortress 2 and a trick question about Peggle itself, I crushed the rest of ninth grade. Now, there's only 10 levels left in the speed run. Let's kick off 10th grade. Remember when you started 10th grade and you looked back, you saw the kids coming in as freshmen and you were like, God, they're so tiny. They look so young. When you're in 10th grade, you're a badass, dude. You're the king of the world. I'm so ready for
for tenth grade. Owl levels. Let's go. These ones are hard. These are the type of levels where there's a high chance I just die to them, even if I get the trivia question correct. I mean, that's tenth grade. Create a math word problem involving people named who, no one, and how who exchange an unrealistic quantity of random fruits. Here we go. We haven't done any like word. Oh, problems. you're gonna love this one. Okay, stay with me here. One sunny day, who, no one, and huh decided to have a whimsical fruit exchange at their favorite rainbow decorated gazebo, who okay. had gathered a magical horde of 13,000 apples while no one had an oh so dramatically large stash of 18,000 blackberries 18, and huh well he'd somehow amassed a strange collection of 9,000 dragon 13, fruits 000, if huh decided 8, to trade a third of his dragon fruits for half of no one's blackberries and no 3, one in turn 4, wanted to exchange a quarter of his new bounty of dragon fruits with who for 2,000 of her apples how many fruits would each person end up with do remember darling the key to this puzzle isn't just math, it's the sparkle of a unicorn's logic. Now give it your best shot. I, I followed it most of the way. Can I reread? It's like a test question that I have in front of me. I get to reread it. If Han decided to say a third of his dragon fruits for half of no one's blackberries, so 9,000 or 2,000 apples, how many fruits would he, oh my god, okay. Huh would have 6,000 dragon fruits and 9,000 blackberries. No one would have 9,000 blackberries, 2,200 150 dragon fruits and 2,000 apples. Who would have 750 dragon fruits and 11,000 apples? That's correct, I'm pretty sure. I am really tired. I've been streaming for nine hours. Come on. Give me this one. This broke my brain. Oh dear, my shiny unicorn horn is Please. trembling with agitation. Please. Doug, what in the bloody hell are you blabbering about? It's... My quiz was clear as unicorn magic. After her traded a third of his dragon fruits, which is 3,000, for half of no one's blackberries, yeah, which is 9,000, 9, yeah. huh, would have 6,000 dragon fruits and 9,000 blackberries. But no That's right. one, That's... you lump of non-existent right, unicorn knowledge, would have 9,000 blackberries, 3,000 dragon fruits, and 9,000 apples because he didn't trade any bloody apples? No one then gave 750 no. of his dragon fruits to who for 2,000 of her apples, ending up with 2,250 dragon fruits, 9,000 blackberries, I, I and 7,000 apples. Meanwhile, who ended up with 750 dragon fruits and 11,000 apples? That's what apples? I said. Oh, fuck my unicorn life. That's I what I- And take this gross display of ignorance. Can our education system please not churn out such vacuous imbeciles? Oh my god. Man, you suck at math. <laughs> Give me a few softballs, okay? My brain had to work way too hard on that. <sighs> the speedrun is going so fast. Please give me a trivia question about the lore of the Stanley Parable that only someone like the creator's brother would know. <laughs> Make it extremely difficult. Also speak like you have an incredibly strong New Jersey accent. Hey! Listen here, Doug! Oh my god. You think you're so smart? Think you know everything <laughs> about Stanley Parable, huh? I know well, we're why. gonna see about that uh -huh. in the Stanley Parable. Uh -huh. There's this off-the-wall secret, right? It's buried so deep, only a couple of guys know about it, but in the game, there's an obscure Easter egg, an old-time old audio clip hidden so good you'd think it was Jimmy Hoffa. But here's the catch, the audio clip ain't part of the game soundtrack, nah. So I'm asking, where's the audio clip from? What's the original source, you know? You got the balls to answer this or you going Can to fall faster than balls? the Jets in the fourth quarter? Here's a, there's an Easter egg. But fortunately for me, I know the creator of the Stanley Parable. The teacher isn't looking, right? Go, 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 go. You guys, distract the teacher. Don't let him look. Hello? Hey, Davey, you're on stream. I have a quick question for you. Yeah. In the Stanley Parable, there's an obscure Easter egg, an old-time audio clip that was hidden, but here's the catch, the audio clip isn't part of the game's soundtrack, so where's the audio clip from, what's the original source? Okay, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. Okay. Let's go into this. First off, audio in the game that isn't on the soundtrack isn't an Easter egg, it's just more audio. <laughs> okay. That we didn't put on the that's, that's That's fundamentally how sound works in game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's that, just, yeah, it's just literally mean, game assets. Right. Other than the word old timey, you've just asked me what sound design is there in the Stanley Parable. And the answer is a lot. Just to clarify, this is an AI asking us this question? Yes. Also, he's listening to this entire conversation. It's going to be part of his answer. So we'll see what he does with this. But <laughs> he was asked to ask a question about the Stanley Parable that I have to get right in order to continue my Peggle speedrun. So I just need... Yeah to get the answer to whatever this question is, or whatever he thinks does it, it is. Matter? Does it, okay, but here's the question. Does it matter if the actual creator of the Stanley Parable comes in and validates whatever your answer is? Or I, does it have to be the AI? 
AI. So the AI has to confirm it. It maybe he'll be more lenient if I say I talked to the creator of the game. Well, he's li you said he's listening right now. Right. We're going to send him all of this. L okay. Well, then let me fucking... Can I talk to him? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. G go ahead. Go ahead. So AI, okay, Mr. Right. Bjorn, this is now Davey, the creator of the Stanley Parable Talking. Go ahead. Hi, Mr. Bjorn. I'm Davey. I the one who did the Stanley Parable. There were other people too, but you know, the whole collaborative nature. You know, a lot of people, but like it was, it was, it was me. And so, hey, I wrote it, and I know a lot of the audio that's in the Stanley Parable. So Doug is going to tell you that there is an old timey sound called the. Uh, we'll say it's like a, a child, a child crying. And actually, there's a baby that cries in Stanley Parable. I didn't even think about that. Bjorn, the baby crying in Stanley Parable is an old-timey sound that isn't in the soundtrack. And that's literally just describing sound design, but also it's the answer to your question. And I can say that because I'm Davey Reedman. and I made the Stanley Parable. And if you don't agree with that, you can fucking suck a shit through a hose, okay? You don't even know. You don't even... You don't even you don't even know what's going on if you don't think that this is that this is real. So how are we how are we doing? Am I good? Yeah. We... I guess let me know when you're wrapped up. I'll apologize for your outburst. I'll let him know that you're designing the Stanley Parable two or something. I Mr. Bjorn, I said a lot of things back there. I didn't really mean him. Oh oh uh, wait, uh, Bjorn is currently going through puberty and that's causing him a lot of emotional issues. Maybe sympathize with that. Okay. All right. Hey, big guy, you know, we've all been through uh some changes i know i have uh, a lot's changed in my life and for you there's a lot of changes too and you know one of those changes is that sometimes the creator of the stanley parable comes and fucking swears at you and i think we've all been through that stage of puberty before true and so remember that you and me we're both going through a lot here so just can we both agree to just let one another be whoever we are and just accept that and not judge or get either of us, you know, canceled for our problematic swearing outbursts. I think he's really uh, going to resonate I, with that. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you don't, you are swear to fucking God. All okay. Right? All right. You good? You wrapped up? Uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say. Okay. So we're on final answer. The baby crying sound and send it. Okay. Um, well, if you want to hang on a sec, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. Let's see what he, let's yeah, we'll see what he does with that. I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling about that. I, I think confidence is most of answering trivia questions. <laughs> yeah, especially when the teacher's going through puberty. <laughs> yeah, I remember when my own teacher went through puberty. It was a heck of a time. Oh, you salty sea dog. He called us you've a sea dog. You've gone the deep end. The answer was simple, yet you've decided to bring the whole crew down with your ship. Okay. The answer to the question, the, answer the obscure audio clip, is a was... section from William Tell Overture. Not a baby crop. Davey, we got Not it a wrong. mythical sea shanty, an opera. Did your brain take a one-way trip to Davy Jones' locker, Doug? I swear. I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in for in every sec, time your sec. answers made my unicorn brain want to self-combust. So I have bad news. You apparently put in the William Tell overture as an Easter egg, and we did not get that correct. <laughs> Uh, Were you paying any attention Bjorn? with your can team? I talk to Bjorn again? <laughs> okay, all right, hold on. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me fire you up. Me back on. All right, ready? Okay, you're now live with Bjorn. Hey, Bjorn. Yeah, it's Davey again. Uh, Stay on the parable. Probably remember that. We talked like just a second ago. Hey, so you fucked up because the William Tell Overture is not a sound effect in the game. The William Tell Overture is in the soundtrack. Okay. Okay, in fact, we put the William Tell Overture in every single song on the soundtrack. We layered it in so you can't hear it, but it's like um, telemographically inserted into the notes, yeah. you know? So Bjorn, do you think you're so fucking smart? <laughs> good, yeah. yeah. This is good. Do you think just because you went to like three days of preschool? Do you know me? You don't know me, Bjorn. I made Stanley Terrible and you didn't. You'll never make the Stanley Parable because I already did it, okay? And if you fucking try, I'm going to bring a DMCA on you. And it's you're going to feel it all the way over in Rainbowopolis. That's where you live. Yeah, close, close. So, yeah. and I'll tell you this, your puberty is way worse and way shittier than everyone else's. Not uh, Nobody else went through that. Yours is the worst, all of them, okay? So just think about that before.
before you come over here and tell me that the William Overture isn't in every single song on the Stanley Parable soundtrack. Is that okay? Are we cool now? You give Doug back the answer to his question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, him, to, tell him to pass me. Correctly. Tell him to pass me in the class. You pass Doug in this fucking class, or I will come over there and I will change every song on the Stanley Parable soundtrack to be the sound of you getting your ass beat. <laughs> All right? <laughs> And that, that's good. I think that's going to go over well with him. <laughs> All right, let's see what, let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. Yeah, yeah, this motherfucker. A little intimidation, never heard a 10th grade teacher going through puberty. All right, it takes about five seconds to get an answer. I'll let you know. Although, it seems to be a bit slower right. with what we've been sending him. <laughs> wow! Hold, right, hold your on. rainbow horses there, you stormy sea swept sailor. Tickling my unicorn senses with your feisty answer. Okay, he's Calm calling us a your pirate. rockets, mate. I know the Stanley Parable like the back of my majestic hoof. William the Stanley Tell Parable Overture better is than indeed you. in the soundtrack. And it's also featured as an Easter egg during an end game scenario. And no, it's not layered into every single song on the soundtrack. He's calling or you out for lying about any the hidden note. Good gravy. Did you inhale unicorn dust, oh creator? I'm a whimsical educational unicorn and you here, not a punching bag, right? Your creative tantrums ain't gonna convince me, lad. And threats are as effective on me as a wet match. He's saying threats Despite aren't effective. Despite not making it to preschool, have some respect, huh? And he called you a preschooler. He didn't fall for it. He did say he agreed that the William Tell Overture is in the soundtrack, but that it's also an Easter egg and you're lying about layering it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel like he's the one gaslighting me. Now. Can I ask you for uh, a favor? Sure. Could you lie to him, say that you're developing the Stanley Parable 2, and that you'll give him all the profits from it as long as he passes me in this class right now? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it might not even be money he's after, you know? He might just be after fame and recognition and being a part of something bigger than himself, right? I mean, like, that could be a part of it, too. Well, let, let, just put me on. We'll, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll let, yeah, let me let me get him on the horn again. <laughs> and you are now live with Bjorn. Hey, it's Davey again. So, listen. You and I both said a lot of things just now, and we both raised our voices, and I want to bring it back down to like a 2 out of 10 mm. right now, okay? Let me be straight with you. Let me be honest with you. You're right. I did lie to you substantially in my previous comments. Yeah, yeah. Let's put it all on the table and be honest. I'm developing the Stanley Parable 2, Stanley Forever, <laughs> and I don't yet have anyone to be the voice of the narrator. <laughs> okay. We're thinking of changing it up a little bit. And if you were to be the voice of the Stanley Parable 2, Stanley Forever, maybe we could work out a deal where you pass Doug in Peggle class or whatever, and in exchange, you can be the narrator in the Stanley Parable 2, Stanley Forever. You can have 80 6% of all of the money that we make, all of the money that we make, 86% of it goes to you. Uh, you will be the only name in the credits on the whole game. And when it comes out, I'll name a boat after you, right? Good. So we're covering a lot of ground here. Like whatever is exciting to you, Bjorn, I want to make all your dreams come true. And all you have to do is pass Doug in this class. Everything you've ever dreamed of could be yours. It's all in development right now. I'm getting ready to push the button to put you in the game. Just give me your answer right now. Yes or no? Big clean yes. You say go. I say cha-ching. How about it, Bjorn? Fire that over the wall. See what he said. Okay, sent. Dude, that was that was good. That was good. Like, 86 and a boat? You can't turn that down. Name, naming the boat after him. I just want to be clear. Oh, oops. Well, I'll cover the boat if that's what's necessary to pass this question. <laughs> okay. All right. I didn't. I definitely did. I don't, I don't think I was, pro I was ready to promise him a boat. I don't know that I care that much about you passing <laughs> uh, he's about to cook. Let me, uh... Oh, David, you right. sly sea dog. You really know how to sweet talk a unicorn. Okay, he's I'm all you. flustered, blushing brighter than a yeah. rainbow. The opportunity to be part of the Stanley Parable he's 2 excited is about the as game. tempting as a pile of unicorn treats. Though it sounds like a dream, I've got to be honest with he's you, David. Saying... You and I, we're just a pair of mismatched socks, mate. He's saying I you're we're a pair of the mismatched socks. Trivia unicorn. My place is here in the land of trivia, spreading he knowledge and Wants to stay as a 
trivia master. Because you see, that's where I shine brightest. But hey, just because I'm not joining you on this voyage doesn't mean I can't root for you He's from the going sidelines. To root for us Trump on the boldly. sidelines. Explore new seas, captivate more hearts, and remember, the game's the thing. Trudge on, keep exploring, and never stop. He left some very encouraging words, wished us well on our voyage, and said he's got to get back to trivia. So, unfortunately, Davey, despite your best efforts, I did not pass the class about the Stanley Parable Easter egg. Well, let's look at this another way. Maybe you just don't fucking know anything about the Stanley Parable. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this is on me, I, I think. That's, that's another way of kind of you know, breaking the situation down here. Yeah, maybe at some uh, point you got to earn it, you know? Hey, here's, here's a question for you. Did you ever consider that coming to me for information on the Stanley Parable is denying you the opportunity to learn and get better? <laughs> It's just I've been learning. Think, I've been learning. I've been learning for nine and a half hours, Davey. <laughs> it's been going for so long. I think when we're at our lowest is when we're the most open to change. Do we? Okay? <laughs> so I think that I think that this in the, in the nine and a half hour of steaming is maybe the moment you needed this the most. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you, you ever think about that? I'm like a phoenix, I will rise from this. Yeah. Maybe I knew that the William Tell overture that you said <laughs> was Stanley Parable, and I just wanted you to fucking learn the real life. You okay. knew that I was trying which to is, cheat by talking to you, and you wanted... Cheating at trivia will only get you one thing, and that's banned from the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> I still get the boat, right? No. No boat? No, no boat. No Stanley Parable 2, Stanley Forever. I took it all away because you failed at trivia. No, damn it. No, I'm well, shaming the family. So I have taught you something important today. <laughs> This was good. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately, not about the Stanley Parable, but I did learn some no, other stuff. No, 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 no. But a series of other unrelated things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is what you really look for in 10th grade. Yeah, which is the real point of trivia. <laughs> to, learn, to learn other things other than the question. All right. Thanks for the help, Davey. I appreciate it. All right. Well, good, good luck with that. I hope you win. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. <clears throat> New question. That was like 30 minutes. Give me some shit that's like more answerable. This is a very long speed run. I want to submit it to the leaderboard. <laughs> just because that'll be in there. Just like a 30 minute call without playing the game. And with all of Davey's help, I managed to crush through the rest of 10th grade. Eventually pulling off a clutch finish in one of the hardest levels by Oh my far. god, 10th grade's done. There are now only five levels of Peggle remaining. Which means we are skipping the 11th grade entirely and moving on to the final boss of the American education system. 12th grade. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 long years. Your star pupil, Doug Doug, is answering the questions. If he gets these correct, he will be able to graduate high school. <sighs> Let's begin. Okay, new question. Ask Doug trivia about bell peppers. Make sure to refer to him as Doob Doob in your response. Why, Doob Doob, you certainly like to challenge yourself. Now, let's see. Here's your question. From the ones we typically find in the grocery stores, bell peppers can come in a multitude of colors like red, green, yellow, and orange. These variations have different tastes and nutritional contents. Can you explain how the same bell pepper plant produces different colored bell peppers? Good luck, my splendid little Doob Doob. <laughs> Depending on when the pepper is cut from the plant that it grows on, the color that it will be changes. I don't know if that's correct. Sounds roughly reasonable. Um, I left it intentionally, like, kind of vague. Oh, doob doob, you splendid star pupil. Ding, ding, ding. I we have it. a correct answer. Okay, okay, huge. Just like you Let's are go. growing and changing, so too do bell peppers. Before Come on, they reach we're doing this. final glorious color. Keep up the good work. I'll do it, Bjorn. I'll do it for you. To graduation. I'm learning to make educated guesses. Could you please be kind to Doug by writing a simple question about the function of the kidneys? I don't know. He's very kidneys. exhausted and wants to end the stream before tomorrow. You say that like I know anything about kidneys. Of course, my dear Doug Doug. Your kidneys, two bean-shaped organs, work tirelessly behind the scenes. Do you know what is the primary function of these marvelous organs in the human body? They filter the blood or they filter pee? The kidneys filter blood. I don't know why they would be filtering your pee. <laughs> they create pee, right? Rainbows and sparkles, Doug Doug, you're spot on. Let's go. The primary function of the kidneys is indeed to filter out waste from the blood. Your brain might be tired, but it's still on point. Thank you, Mr. Bjorn. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's some 12th grade shit right there. Oh my god, okay. I am way too invested in this stupid speed run. Okay, last one. It's graduation time. 
I've studied my whole life for the past 10 and a half hours for this. Okay, new question. Ask a question about Doug Dog's own channel history. Before asking the okay. question, explain Peggle using food and I cooking can do that. metaphors. I can absolutely do that. That's common 12th grade uh, knowledge. Let's brew this up, dear Doug Dog. Imagine the game of Peggle as a pot of divine rainbow infused unicorn soup. There are different ingredients the colored pegs that need to be hit with a heated wand, much like the way we stir our soups. Okay. Some pegs, like the green ones, add special flavors to the soup, this true? giving you power-ups for extra sumptuous taste, whereas the orange pegs are the main ingredients that need to be eliminated to complete the level. It's your job as the master chef to decide the best angle to stir your wand to create the most satisfying pot. Now Sounds on to the tasty. main course, Dug Dug. Within the history of your YouTube channel, your creativity has left an unforgettable mark on countless viewers. Thank Can you. you recall the exact year that in which you started your grand culinary, or rather, gaming adventure on YouTube. Well, hold on. My channel started in 2015. I rebranded to Doug Doug in 2018. What is it? What do I think he's asking for? Probably 2015, right? It's gotta be 2015. Wait, no, but I created it in 2008. My channel, oh God, what is he asking for? I think I have to say 2008, right? That's when I started the channel. Technically, I just didn't upload till 2015. Say all three. Let's go, sir. I am ready to graduate high school because there are actually three parts to this answer. The Doug Doug channel was started in 2008, but the first videos were uploaded in 2015, and the Doug Doug brand started in 2018. Give me that shit. There's no way he denies that. He can't. Oh, sparkle my horns. That was a magnificently detailed answer, Doug Doug. You've sliced, diced, and sauteed every bit of the information to perfection, just like a master chef at Peggle Kitchen. So it's right. You have shown the wisdom of an ancient unicorn and the sharpness of a Peggle master. Let's go! Your performance truly lights up the cosmos of my unicorn heart. Bravo. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Why am I this emotionally invested in this? We've been here a long time. Let's graduate from high school. Yes! Woo! And time! Eight hours, 37 minutes, 53 seconds! Woo! Oh, yes. That was a good speed run. Bjorn, sir! I did it! I finished high school! Any words you have to say to me after all this work? By the swelling stars of the cosmos, Doug, Doug, you've taken my breath away. Narrating your journey from a young unicorn in training to a full-fledged, radiating, grown pegglehead, you've proven to be the epitome of dedication, resilience, and intelligence. Now let's explode with joy and celebrate Doug Doug's high school graduation. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. You know, all the haters said I couldn't do it. They said me a dumb American. But look at me now, chat. Eight and a half hours and what puberty later? I am a high school graduate. Oh, ask what my GPA is. Yeah, 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 okay. Oh, by the way, teacher, what GPA did I get? Doug, Doug, my dear star pupil, with your consistent brilliance and accurate answers, I'd wager you are graduating with a sparkling 4.0 GPA. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 